Good afternoon, John Thornburg, Headmaster at Malden Catholic. And today I'm joined by Mrs. Rose Maria Redman. Uh, and this is the purpose of our webinar this afternoon for you to have an opportunity to meet her. Uh, just a couple of reminders about webinars. Uh, you'll be able to have the opportunity to type questions after we get through an introduction and a few other things and send those to us and we'll try to answer as many as we can. And um, that's how we'll interact with you. We don't we don't see you and we don't hear you, but we're able to see your questions. And afterwards, we'll go ahead and put out the questions uh, with the answers. And the video of this will be posted as well uh, for those of you who might want to watch it again, or if you know somebody who missed it. So there we go. I am going to start uh, by opening us in prayer, and then we'll go ahead with this afternoon's program. So let's go ahead and bow our heads in the name of the Father, the Son. In Holy Spirit, amen. Father, thank you for this day and thank you for the people you bring into our lives. You use others, Father, to form us, to encourage us, to strengthen us. And we know at this time in Malden Catholic's history, you're, you're moving among us, that Rosemary Redman is part of that plan. And we ask, Lord, that you would bless our efforts. Thank you for Rose's willingness to join our community and for the blessings that she's going to bring with her as a member of MC. Thank you for this webinar. I ask that you would give us wisdom and help us to cover the things that uh, families are looking to be covered. And it's in your name we pray, amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. You know, some people may know this. Uh, for many years, I worked at a, a leadership school. It was a military academy and they announced there was going to be a new president and he was a major general from the Marines and immediately all the faculty, we all became quite concerned about who our new boss was going to be and stories ran rampant about him that in the Vietnam War, he had shot down all these planes and as a general, he had done this and he was one of the highest, highly, most highly decorated generals around. And to be quite frank, we're, we're afraid, we didn't know who this new person was and the role they would play in changing our community. They collected us all into the mess hall, the dining hall as they called it, and in walked this gentleman, ramrod straight with a stern look on his face, with him decorated in a general's outfit. And we all sat silently as he approached the podium and uh, he came up and he said, hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Smoke Spanger. And uh, he, that was his nickname. Uh, you, you can call me Smoke if you want to, because that's what they said I did to the planes when I shot them down, that smoke would come out of them. Uh, you, can, you can call me Ralph. That's my first name if you want. But I just want you to know that you are the most important group and that faith plays such an important role in my life. And I know it plays it in yours. And I'm looking forward to working with you. And with that introduction, we knew that we had someone in our midst that was going to value us and believe in us and we could work with them totally different than what we imagined ahead of time well this evening or this afternoon we're doing a webinar to introduce rose maria and rose maria redmond i think you're going to find much like i found uh my military general i'm sorry rose i'm not trying to equate you with a military general uh is someone who's going to be amazing for our community. Uh, I just want to uh, say a couple things about Rose and then we'll go ahead and let her talk. We knew we needed someone special to come in as our one principal, not just anybody. And we had very specific qualifications. In fact, we approached two national search organizations to ask for the candidates. And each one of these national search organizations could only provide us one. And through that, we interviewed, and our trail led us to Rose Maria Redman, right in our own backyard up in Methuen. And we met Rose, and we were immediately impressed with her, her ability to listen, to collaborate, understanding the needs of boys and girls, working with faculty. And we knew that we had been led to the person who was going to lead our academic programs. Since we've hired her, I've had at least four or five heads of school in the area contact me and say, 
you have found a real gem. Rosemary Redmond is a great, great academic leader, a great leader. And in fact, today I had one of our other Catholic schools call me and say, we would have scooped her up, but you are too fast because she is just outstanding. And so we are just very thankful, Rose, and I'm not trying to embarrass you here. We're very thankful that you're joining our community. We're very thankful for the contributions you're going to make. And uh, I, I'm just so happy as headmaster of Malden Catholic uh, that you're coming on board. Uh, Rose, with that, I'm just going to open it up to you to provide, uh, you know, just some general comments about you, your background, anything you feel you want to share. Thank you, John. I am very excited. I, I was a little nervous about the military background. I, I, I was afraid that people were going to think that I was coming in as a general, um, and I, I certainly am not. Um, yes. <laughs> one of the things everyone will definitely find out about me right away is I'm a listener. I like to be able to um, talk to people, listen to them. Um, you know, it's very important to me. Malta Catholic has an incredible tradition, and that is what I think is the thing I'm most excited about. So I'm definitely not coming to Malta Catholic to come through and make sweeping changes or anything. I'm there to listen. I'm there to support John. I'm there to um, be there for the faculty, for the staff, and then also for the students and their parents. Um, you've made a decision to send your child to this incredible institution. Um, it's, um, it's amazing to me, John's telling you about people wondering where I'm going. Um, so many people, when I at, tell them where I'm going and I say Malden Catholic, I always get the, ooh, that's a great school. I, I'm so honored and so excited to get up here where I live in Methuen to get such a reaction. Um, you have to know how great your school is that up here 30 miles north, people are still reacting in such um, an incredible way. Um, you know, for many years, I have been, I've been a presentation over 31 years. I started out as an English teacher and, um, you know, quickly became their assistant principal, worked um, on curriculum. We made major changes to the program, things that we had not done, added in a great number of advanced placement courses, honors courses. Um, we did a lot to bring um, the school forward. And, and it's those kinds of things that I'm looking forward to bringing to Malden Catholic. And, and not just academics, you know, there's so many things for the students. When you hear Malden Catholic, you hear leaders. And I'm so excited to be able to continue that tradition of creating great leaders from this school. Um, and I'm excited about that. A little bit more about me, I am a, a mother. I have, uh, my husband is an English teacher as well. And I have one son who is a, just completed his freshman year of college. He attends Embry-Riddle University. And um, it's very interesting. And, and that's why I relate so much, especially right now to the seniors and those of you who have just graduated. You're living in a time, you know, so many ask me, well, what did you think? What do, what do you do? And I, and I would say, this is the first time in your life that the adults are trying to figure things out at the same time that you are. Um, this is nothing any of us have ever lived through. And to watch, you know, my son have to navigate online learning in college and watch my students, high school students navigate that. And then watch my nieces and nephews who are in grammar school try to figure those things out. Um, it's really been an eye-opening experience, but you know, we worked very hard at distance learning here at PMA. I spent a lot of time training the teachers, training, um, preparing them for it. Um, and, and Malden Catholic had an incredible, um, did an incredible job. Uh, Mr. Thornburg and I spoke many times about what was happening. And I just look forward to whatever challenges come to us this fall in terms of classroom and knowing what we can and can't do. Um, I, I'm ready for that because uh, we have had a lot of experience with that at presentation. And I look forward to whatever endeavor that means this fall in Malden, I plan to continue that. Um, I don't know if 
said enough about myself. I did. I, I hope I said I was an English teacher at heart. I love saying that. That's my first thing. Um, I had some great students that I, I still love to be in contact with um, and talk about English. You know, with the school closing, so many great memories are flooding back to me and it's it's been incredible. Um, but I'm looking forward to new memories. I'm looking forward to new opportunities. I've already met with um, some of the administrators. I've spoken to some of the staff. I just can't wait to meet people in person. Um, and I think Mr. Thornburg is going to bring that up as well. We're going to give people an opportunity to meet me in person. We'll set some times up that you can sign up and come to Malden Catholic to meet with me and um, socially distant, of course, and be able to um, have a conversation and get to know who I am as a person because um, I'm always here for the students. I'm always here for the parents and I, I want to make sure that you understand that and, and I can get that message across to you. Yeah, well, thank you, Rose. Uh, I know a webinar like this is, you know, a little nerve wracking because you're talking just to your uh, <laughs> computer and you're trying to anticipate or think through what, you know, you would tell an audience in front of you. And I really appreciate the fact that you're willing to carve out a lot of time this summer to allow families to come to MC and meet with you in small groups, which we'll be putting information out about that and talk more about that in just a bit. So Rose, you know, mm -hmm. you have a, a, a really uh, strong background in Catholic education. I mean, you attended an all girls school, uh, you were transformed uh, there. Uh, you've gone on to uh, teach English, to be a, a curriculum director, to be uh, an administrator, and then you know even a head of school and you know that that is really impressive you're going to bring a wealth of experience to mc and, and through all those experiences rosa i know that you understand you know what's important for students and for faculty and and for parents but i i do have one question is and i asked you this before uh, with the faculty and staff yesterday and we had a little meet and greet if uh if, if someone who's worked with you, uh, a student, uh, you know, was asked on the street, I'm walking down the street and I say, hey, uh, we have Mrs. Redmond coming to our school. I know that, you know, you were at PMA. Uh, what would you say about her so we could learn a little bit more about her? What do you think the average student might say about you, uh, you know, being under you at your school? Um, I think it goes back to good listener. I, I students spend a lot of time in my office and voluntarily um, they want to talk they want to share um, i am very honest i like to be able to hear both sides of a story i am also dedicated and very supportive very supportive um, my job defines who i am sometimes and and being able to make sure that I'm there for my students and for my staff is extremely important. So um, I think they would also say I'm also very loyal and um, I will continue to be that way. And, and again, I'm not just that way because this was the school I had attended. Um, I, I will be that same exact person from Malden Catholic. I, I think that's great. Um, Another question I had for you a little bit is, you know, we've been talking about, uh, you know, PMA and, you know, that it's closing this year and there's been some questions around, you know, what happened there and, and why did that close? And and we've talked about that through the process about the resources and the order that was sponsoring the school, making a decision. And some of the folks we talked to said if it hadn't been for you, that school would have, uh, well, PMA would have closed years ago, that you really, you know, through creative efforts and just sheer willpower, willed that school uh, further down the road that it would have been otherwise. But, you know, and that's one question I know some of our parents had is, you know, why did mm -hmm. uh, Presentation to Mary close? Could, could you address that a little bit? Sure. Um, God, it breaks my heart, but, um, you know, in this day and age, it is very difficult to maintain um, a Catholic school, a tuition driven school. And um, we had a lot of students here who um, it was just their home away from home. And, and we really did everything we could to 
continue to make uh, PMA successful. And and I don't care what anyone says, if they want to say it was me, it's, it's never one person. Um, I had the most um, incredible people who worked here on my staff that just because of them, you know, when I said we would try having iPads in the classroom, these people taught for 20 years. They said, okay, let's see what we can do. And I said, we're opening a dorm. Okay, what do we need to do to, to, to be trained for that? Um, no matter what I, oh, and when I said we're going to bring boys in, they said, okay, what do we need to do? So, um, you know, my the staff and I worked really hard together to give as many opportunities to do everything we possibly could. Um, and I think that we did, and we, we really tried, but economic times made it very difficult. Um, the sisters are in the process of selling the property, um, and, and we were just not in a position to be able to financially stay afloat without their help. And um, just, you know, that and enrollment, it just, it was difficult. And, and the area that we're in, there's a lot of, well, similar to where you are, but there's um, a lot of competition for us up in the um, Merrimack Valley. And that made it also very difficult. So a lot of factors, a lot of factors. Um, sure. But I'm proud of how far we went, and I'm proud of um, who was able to obtain a PMA education, and I'd definitely be bringing all of those values um, that I hold dear from PMA to Malden Catholic. No, it, it's no secret that Catholic schools are, are meeting tremendous challenges, and as we talked, you know, the direction the sisters needed to go with the order uh, and some other factors really, you know, impacted uh, PMA. Uh, and I just want our parents, you know, to know that, you know, this isn't a reflection on you or your team. It's just a fact of the matter of today and, and some of the uncontrollable scenarios around schools. So, you know, one thing you told me, Rose, is you're used to doing everything. Uh, and, you know, when, you cut, when you're coming to MC, you said, you know, there's assistant principals there's you know i'm used to being there the first in the day last at night mm -hmm. used to helping set up and do some of those other things and i that humility and that servanthood uh, could, could you just help us understand a little bit more about you know what makes you tick around that right um it's funny that because we, i've already been part of a couple meetings and i'm listening to everybody saying they'll do this they'll do that and i keep thinking let me do something. I, I'm ready. I, I, I want to jump in here. Um, yes, I pretty much opened the building, closed the building, waited with students who were waiting for rides. Um, you know, we had a graduation rally and um, we were make. I was helping make signs. I was setting the tents up in the morning. Um, you know, everybody, I can tell you that I probably have done just about every job here in the school and that's because I know what it's like and Catholic education is important and sometimes we all have to just pitch in and we all do what we can. And, and I will say there's never a job that I would ask anyone to do that I wouldn't do myself. So um, I am always willing to um, do whatever it takes. And um, because sometimes you need those special little touches and you wanna be able to help. So um, I'm, I, when I'm in, I'm in 100% and, and I'm ready. I'm I'm in. I'm ready to be that 100% from all the Catholic as well. That's wonderful, and and I take it that's even considering the drive time. You've already factored that in to leave early in the morning and, and realize that you know that the job requires late nights at times and all those things. Correct. Well, I've luckily um, I've found friends from college who um, have already offered uh, their homes if I need a break and if I need a quick dinner. And so uh, everyone has already given that opportunity. I'm, I'm seeing the Malden Catholic reach is unbelievable. I can't believe the different people I didn't even realize had gone to Malden have been sending me notes and emails um, once they heard that I that I took this job. So it's been very exciting. Yeah, no, we're excited to have you. There's been several questions and I was gonna ask this anyway, and this is probably one of the major questions is, how are you going to implement change and what changes will there be? Because as I've talked about the one principle model, I've talked about alignment and 
in unity and we've had some discussions around that as well and i think you know people you know are, are looking for some change uh, some mm -hmm. people are looking for things to stay the same because that's what they're used to can you talk a little bit about how you see this change process this alignment yeah. process sure um I, I think the most important thing is that i see my job as being um a support for you that um, I need to take some of that day-to-day -day operation off of your shoulders so that you can really work in that headmaster role. And I think that working with Mr. Bacchino and Mr. Smith, that we are going to be able to um, create a school that is um, clearly the um, vision and the mission that Malden Catholic already wants. Um, like I said before, I'm a listener. I'm not going to come in and, and say everything, we're changing everything, not, there's nothing good right now because there's so much good, so much good. So I am there just to um, put forth the vision of Malden Catholic and to help sort of uh, bring things together and, and, and to see what needs to be done. I, you've had a lot of strategic planning, a lot of people have spoken about how they feel. I just want to be able to, to read a lot of that information and, and then with the team put together what we need to do to keep Malden Catholic moving in that tradition that it has for, what, over 80 years now? Yep, yep. I had a question from a student, Rose, uh, that asked, oh, okay, great. Is, the, awesome. is the curriculum going to change for a rising sophomore? Uh, and that's a common question sure. uh, from students, from boys and girls, just asking, is, is my curriculum going to change? The classes I signed up for, the things I hope to take? So nothing is going, as far as I'm concerned, nothing should be changing for September. Um, mm -hmm. But I think during the course of the year, I would like to be able to see what those course offerings are, how we offer things. Um, are we giving you the best um, opportunities so that, for the next step of your life going on to college, you know, are, are you doing the best you possibly can? Are you, are you getting the best opportunities that you possibly can? So um, right, right. don't intend to change anything for September um, right now, so. Right, right. Yeah, because we've talked about the fact that, you know, we've handed out our course catalog, students mm -hmm. have, you know, been scheduled for things and, and that's what they're planning on taking and that's what we're going mm -hmm. to deliver. I know I've had some parents reach out to me and say, you know, could there be an honors class here instead of just two levels or could this mm -hmm. go there or how do the students do that? And some of those smaller tweaks, you know, we'll look at, but, uh, you know, really the, the, the curriculum that they all signed yeah. up for will remain. The schedule the is set now. We can't be making that kind of change right now. But. Yeah, and, and, and MC schedules, by the way, people will ask, usually come out the second week or so of July. So, okay. Rose, will the standards uh, for the girls division be maintained at Malden Catholic? Standards in as much, so as far as I'm concerned, because I'm not exactly sure what that question, which standards we're talking about, but may, but Malden Catholic has strong academic and leadership standards. And I plan to make sure that we maintain that on both the boys and the girls side. Yep. And uh, so the answer is yes. And uh, you know what, what we've talked about and what I've shared with parents as well is, you know, we have a vision that, that we've been running with. Right. And we want to remain true to that mm -hmm. vision and uh, keep moving ahead. In fact, yes. some questions have been going around about the leadership program. And that is mm -hmm. one of the priorities that we've been meeting about already. Exactly. Leadership at Malden Catholic you know leadership in the girls division and, and what they've worked been doing working towards their mm -hmm. capstone and leadership that occurs on the boys side and and how that's organized and then the intentionality of that that Malden catholic has a history of developing leaders and i know that this summer uh, rose we're doing some research looking mm -hmm. at what we've been doing but yes. can you talk a little bit about you know the, the leadership and, and kind of your mm -hmm. intentions yeah i know you're still getting up to speed on some of the specifics but you know i think people right. would like to hear kind of your thoughts around leadership sure so i know that um boys and girls you've ch you've chosen malden catholic because of the leadership opportunities um there are things as part of the uh, malden catholic 
um, curriculum that you can't find anywhere else. So um, I've started um, to review what you've been doing for the girls' leadership program as well as for the boys. And I just plan to sit with the team to discuss those things and figure out what we can do to continue to enhance it. Um, certainly on the girls, I've been already a, been attending the girls' conference this week, um, trying to do that in between things. So great ideas there. And then um, also a plan to next week to start looking at what we're doing leadership wise for the boys. So um, you have things available to you at Malden Catholic that they're nowhere else. And, and you chose it, this school for a reason. And um, I'm here to enhance things. I'm not here to um, take things down. Yeah, thanks Rose. I appreciate that answer. And I know that the leadership program is something we're going to be looking at and looking to enhance and creating additional opportunities for our students over the summer. Uh, there's a question about how we're going to integrate incoming students. And that's a great question because we just came off a meeting about the strategy for that. And we have an advisement or an advisor program where students will be, you know, serving to reach out to students along with some of our adults serving as advisors. And, you know, this is so new. We just went through it. It's a, it's kind of a new take on what we did last year, but incoming parents should expect and, and students should expect uh, getting contacted uh, by students and staff here to start some summer events uh, for getting, you know, part of the community. I'll let you talk a little bit more about that. Uh, not that we have all the specifics worked out, but we're excited about it, Rose. Right, so that was, that was a, one of the conversations we had today talking about student advisories um, and being able to reach out to the freshmen. We understand how anxious parents are right now. Um, you have a, your child is getting ready to, um, you probably just went through a virtual graduation of eighth grade, and now you're coming to this, this school that you're so excited to attend. Um, and we have to still work out, you know, how September will, what it will look like but we want you to be engaged and we want you to feel like you're part of the Malden Catholic family already. So we are going to work on some things for the summer where you'll be able to connect with other students, um, get to see each other and be able to feel like you already are a member of Malden Catholic. So look for those things because they're coming very soon. So thanks Rose. So getting some questions again about change, you know, mm -hmm. some people are, are worried that, okay, we won't change things over the summer, but will we change things mid-year? And, and I just want to be clear, and, and Rose, you can add to this, that our plan is that we know there needs to be change, like levels that are offered, boys versus girls side, you know, boys can have a CP in honors and an AP. Uh, many times a girls side will have a CP and then an AP and looking at that, and, you know, there's things that on the girl side that's different on the boy side but again we're not changing any of that over the summer and i would expect rose in the fall that you would start listening and looking into these and getting the voice from parents and students and faculty and we'd start considering change but once the school year starts you know it doesn't make sense to do all of a sudden this huge change mid-year mm -hmm. and i can't say for smaller things and tweaks that just normally happen at a school but do you see this change process being fairly transparent is that how you operate as we yes yes so i i am never going to promise you that we won't make any changes but i will promise you that you will always have the ability to ask questions you will always have the ability to um, put your ideas forth and i will listen to those um, you know, I, I have in the past, I've had some very strong feelings about different things, but I let students speak to me. I've let parents speak to me. Uh, and after we listen to both sides, you know, that's when you make that determination of what's going to happen. Now, sometimes it might be that even after listening, we still have to do what's best for everybody. Um, but I promise you that I'm always going to listen. And um, again, we're not going to make these major changes right away, but it will be very transparent and any changes that we do make, whether it's mid-year or smaller ones in September, it'll be very clear to you as to why we've made these changes. Yep, yep, great. 
I appreciate that. There's a question about summer construction that I'll take Rose and let you catch your breath for a oh, second. Oh, good, because I definitely can't answer that. So yeah. <laughs> so uh, we the original plans for construction were modified for the summer due to the pandemic. We are still uh, modifying rooms and creating new spaces so that all the girls and all the boys will have plenty of space. You know pandemic you know not, not considering pandemic if we had if we we're allowed to have everybody in the building we'd have more than enough room uh we're creating a temporary uh new locker room uh for the girls because i know they were at that one smaller locker room uh and we're redoing some classrooms we're taking some spaces that weren't being used for classrooms and creating classrooms there as well uh for boys and so the summer construction plans which i think would be a good idea for me to do a little kind of uh, video update and some graphics for you all. I'll commit to doing that uh, this summer. We'll show that, you know, we're moving ahead and, and everything we're doing this summer, it doesn't have to be undone, okay? It's all part of the original plan, but just some of it might be temporary. So for example, the girls' locker room, we're gonna buy the lockers and we're gonna put them temporarily somewhere else than the space we're originally going to use. And then next summer, we'll finally finish that space once we're able and then move those lockers down there. So it, it's you know complicated to explain right now, but the summer construction plans are to do what we need to do to accommodate the space, knowing that the next summer we'll complete everything uh, that we're going to do originally. And I will uh, put together a little graphic uh, and get, get that out to everyone so uh, that you can understand that a little bit better. All right. Um, well, the programs alignment, does that mean that boys and girls programs are going to be exactly identical? That's a good question. Do you, did you want to try to take that one, Rose, or do you want me to take that one? Sure. I mean, I don't, I, I, I don't want to say that they're going to be identical, but again, I, I, I don't want to say absolutely or not to something until I have a chance to really look at everything. Um, Boys and girls have different needs. So once we look at it, we're going to, everything is about, um, I don't think it's about identical. I think it's about equitable. So yeah. we want right. to make sure that we have um, a, a fair program and the right program for the boys and the right program for the girls. So I think it's looking at that, um, trying to align it and, and make Malden Catholic um, the way it should be as a co-divisional school. And um, so again, there probably will be some changes, but we're not trying to make everything exactly the same because it wouldn't make sense. Yep, yep, right. And I agree with you. That's what I was hoping you would answer. <laughs> That's the great thing about webinars is we didn't rehearse a lot of this. So I'm oh, no, glad no. <laughs> that you said what you said, so. Right. Um, someone asked about faculty and staff returning next year, mm -hmm. um, you know, Right now, you know, knock on wood, uh, all the faculty and staff are returning with the exception of one who, uh, you know, has decided to go off and do something a little bit different. Um, I will tell you that the retention rate of faculty and staff is much greater than it was last summer. Uh, if, if you saw my headmaster goals, number one, when I came in after last summer was to increase the retention of faculty and staff and, uh, and we were able to do that this year. So I'm very thankful for that. We have a great faculty and staff. That's one reason why I'm so excited. Uh, all of them are coming back. And plus, they're the ones that are on the ground, the ones that interact with all the students and really make the program. I mean, as much as I'd like to think as headmaster that, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, this big change agent, I'm really the supporter and, and, and the one that you know, provides the way for faculty and staff to do their job. And uh, I'm just right. so happy that they're all returning. We're, we're gonna see a lot of stability in that uh, and, and they'll be in their same roles as they were last year. So that's a good question. and something that we really wanna celebrate. One parent uh, said, you know, there's a little history being made here, Rose, that you will be oh. the first female principal of the boys division that they've <laughs> ever had. So there's okay. uh there you go so you got that well, i um i was the first um female well let's say not female first non-religious at pma so i guess that's my new role in my life is to be the little groundbreaker 
So. Yep. Yep. Well, you'll get an opportunity to do that here as well. Uh, I should say to parents, you know, there's other questions coming in that, you know, we may not get to, but fortunately, the service we're using, this go-to webinar, is able to collect all the questions, and then our communications department goes through and and collates those. It put answer puts answers together and then sends that out. So if we don't hit your exact question today, we will when that comes out, and you know we would hope to put that out uh, by the end of the week. Um, I got a question for you that was one of mine. And uh, I'm glad that I remembered to ask it. I have it written down here. Uh, Rose, what role does faith play in the formation of our students? What role does faith play in the formation of our students? Oh, faith play. Um, faith, yeah. Having faith, our Catholic faith, our Catholic traditions, our yes. varying charism and values. What role does that play and how important is that you know, in your leadership? So my Catholic faith is extremely important to me. It's definitely the cornerstone of my family life. Um, I, I believe, well, one of the things that's been very important to me at presentation was carrying on the charism of the sisters of the presentation. Um, we had a, um, a long history of Marie Rivier, who was the foundress of the Sisters Order, and I made sure, even as a layperson, to continue to bring on um, and make sure our students understood that that was the she was the foundation of why this school existed. She started the Sisters Order, so um, I know the faith life is also extremely important in Malden Catholic, and. Um, it's really who I am as a Catholic educator. And so I bring all of that from PMA to, to Malden Catholic as well. Um, again, my I, I think probably the hardest part about um, living in this COVID world has been not being able to go to mass, not being able to receive communion. Um, so my faith life is extremely important to me. And um, I intend to make sure that's still a strong part of my life at Malvin Catholic as well. Thanks, Rose, for sharing that. You know, one thing that drew me to Malden Catholic is the importance that faith plays in our school community. And you can see in our mm -hmm. families and our students and faculty and staff, it's an authentic faith and one that plays a role each and every day. And, uh, you know, you might have heard me say this, and I've said it to our families too, I always think, when our Lord says, I came that they might have life and have it more abundantly, that a Catholic education provides the opportunity for that. And, you know, to, to teach or to lead in a Catholic school is, you know, really a ministry. Mm -hmm. And so I'm so glad to hear you say that faith plays an important role in your life. And I know that alone, besides all the other accolades and experience you have, makes you just the right person uh, to lead our faculty, staff, and students uh, in, in the days to come. So uh, thank you. That, that's just a very important area to me, and, uh, and, and I'm glad to hear you say that. Um, I'm looking here at questions. There's a, another one, too, and, and I thought I did my best to answer this, but maybe it was confusing, Rose. It's a question is, is you know, will there be changes mid-year next year uh and i guess i'll let you take a whack at it because I, I don't think i i answered that one very clearly i guess i can't i i don't know what changes would need to be made mid-year honestly right now um to me the biggest thing right that we have to really be thinking about and i i know how difficult this all is but you know we don't even know right now what the start of school will be like and 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 how you know, that's something that we have to work on immediately. Um, you know, rules in the state and what we can and can't do. Um, so I don't anticipate major changes, meaning we think something's not happening, but there could be changes based on, you know, we didn't expect to stay home for three months <laughs> and, and distance learn. So um, I want to say no. Um, but again, like I said to you, I never want to say something and then renege on it later. Um, but we're going to do, again, like I said, we're here to listen, 
we had to make decisions together and figure out the best way to move Malden Catholic forward. Um, and and so I hope that answers it. But I, I don't want to lock myself into saying absolutely right. never right. ever. Because yeah, I yeah. know there's, there's a lot that. that I would have said never ever to this year and, and look where we, you know, look what happened. So yeah, I think the point is are we gonna make huge shifts? in philosophy or oh, no. programming mid-year i don't know are we going to make changes based upon needs of our environment and circumstances yes. Well, yes yes every school does that all the time so you know we don't have this master plan you know mrs redmond arrives in the fall come january there's 10 new things that you know are going to happen uh, this is a very organic process but now that we have the structure uh, right. of one principle now we're positioned to go ahead and review and start making these changes. Mm -hmm. But that's a process. That isn't just a, an automatic thing. I'm not going to hand you a piece of paper and say, here's 10 things. Go make these changes. Uh, Malden right. Catholic, like you said, has so many great things happening. Mm -hmm. And really, the one principal model was to make it so and provide the opportunity so every student had an equal chance mm -hmm. to receive all those good things. In fact, there's a question, Rose, and uh, I, I don't have any idea what your answer will be, but I'm going to ask okay. you anyway. Uh, right. So I ask, will the boys and girls have equal chances for field trips next year? And I haven't talked to you about field trips at all. Uh, you have no idea the basis of the question. So this is really kind of a shot in the dark. But the question is, will the boys and girls have equal chances for field trips mm -hmm. next year? Yes. I don't know how else to answer that. I, this is all about making things equitable. So we we need to look at what's happening on both sides. And so we need to be able to make sure that we give the same opportunities to the young men that we give to the young women. Um, I was also about to say, you know, for me, everything is about mission. So in terms of changes, in terms of field trips, in terms of anything, we are here to um, advance Malden Catholic's mission. So anything we do has to be because it advances the mission, um, no matter what it is. So I think I might be answering that question, but it sounds like we want field trips. Um, and and well, I, well, what we student doesn't sure. want a field trip? But you know, here's the context. Uh, in in I, I, this is what I observed. Okay. The girls as part of their leadership program. Oh, okay. Right. Have right. wonderful opportunities to connect sure. with, you know, leaders and others in the Boston area. A lot of those mm -hmm. uh, coming about through our connections from some of our donors, like Mr. Mm -hmm. Joe O'Donnell, who, you know, has sent a letter of support, you know, for moving to the one principal model. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the girls, you know, have started and continued on this track to build confidence and have voice. And right. you and I have talked about how important this is uh, to that to the girls division mm -hmm. uh, to continue in this direction and, and, and do that uh, on the boys side uh, you know we for lack of a better term we're calling the girls division an innovative brand and the boys side a legacy brand and both are excellent programs I mean I know I have some people who say well one program is better than the other they're both amazing but in their own ways mm -hmm. and again as one principle your role is to bring this together so bring that, that innovation and legacy together yes, yes. And so <laughs> the question i if i read it right from my observations is the boys or someone from the boy side is saying will we have the same transformative field trips that the girls seem to have and i know there's perceptions in there and everything but your answer is yes that's yes. what we'll yes. move towards to do and i think right. that's the right answer so mm -hmm. uh, absolutely for answering that uh, someone asked are we going to continue with the capstone project this is a girls division question uh, the girls the last two years have been working uh, throughout the year and during their winter term towards uh, a, a lot of different uh, social justice uh, type uh, endeavors uh, mm -hmm. you know they did things from uh, you know uh, picking up things on, on the trail through Malden to, uh, you know, uh, things around human trafficking and just these really great uh, causes that they're passionate about that are leading towards a capstone 
and so one of the girls or one of the girls' families asked, will, the, will we keep moving towards a capstone project? So again, I want to. I just need to understand more about it, but it sounds fantastic. And I, I don't anything that is happening that's positive and and is really making Malden Catholic the special school that it is. We need to keep doing those things. Um, you know, that's always been very important to me. I love hearing those things because I think what's important for boys and girls they need to take ownership of things and if you have a cause that you believe in then we need to in some way help support you with that so um if that's what it means working towards a capstone then then that's what we should be able to do um but i just love teenagers being able to um take charge of their life and and things and and not always have adults suggesting what they should do and so if, if they have those causes that they really believe in, I can't wait to hear about them. Yeah. And as you learn more about, uh, you know, the leadership program, our leadership program mm -hmm. that we have, because ours is very unique and distinctive exactly. to our school, right. uh, and you understand the Capstone Project, I have no doubt that we'll keep mm -hmm. that in place because this is right. just a core part of what the girls, you know, have been working towards. Well, someone has asked Rose, and you know, you've served as uh, head of school uh, and as mm -hmm. principal before, and you're coming back to principal. How does the role of headmaster and principal differ? And I'll, I'll let you go first, and then I'll, I'll put in my two cents. Okay. So I feel that, and, and I think I am thrilled for what I did at presentation. I, I We were very different because we did not have a principal and a headmaster. We did at one point. Um, and when one of the sisters had le left, um, they asked me to be head of school, which meant I was doing both jobs, essentially. And the role to me of principal, I just missed it. I missed it. And I feel like I'm just so excited to be able to have that role back because that to me is the one where you are dealing with the academics, you're dealing with the teachers, you're spending time with the students, you're dealing with all the day-to-day -day operations um, whereas in the headmaster role you're focused more on the alumni with the donors you're you're making sure that the school is advancing every day in its mission and as much as i love that part too i had a hard time trying to do all of those things so um i'm very happy to be back in the principal mode of being able to really spend some time with teachers and students. So I am very excited and I'm very excited that you are my boss. That makes you in charge of me now. So. Well, um, <laughs> thanks Rose for that. Uh, you know, I, I, Brother Puccio said this to me the other day and I thought it summarized things well. He said, you know, a principal is really focused on the internal, the day-to-day uh, you know, academics and those things. And the headmaster is focused on the external, if it be around fundraising, strategic planning, community relationships, and not that the headmaster isn't involved in the day-to-day, -day, but because of the, the school our size and oh, the, the needs of every, all, the, all of our stakeholders, there really needs to be a dual role. And most Catholic schools and, and mm -hmm. all the Catholic schools that are the very network I do have a you know headmaster principal uh, you know functioning structure so that can happen um, someone's asked is MC going to go co-educational rather than co-divisional um, I can answer that uh, absolutely not uh, we will remain co-divisional that is the plan uh, and that's what we're meant to be in the, in the vision of our school and we heard our board chair Mr. Donovan say this as well uh, at a webinar a week or so ago that Malden Catholic is going to remain co-divisional and is going to continue to grow in this model to be the strongest co-divisional school it can be. Uh, so uh, another one, another question was, are we going to remain a Zaverian Brothers school? We we're sponsored by the Zaverian Brothers. Uh, we work with them. Zaverian Brothers sponsored school network, the XBSS. And the answer to that is yes. Uh, you know, I, I've met and continue to play a strong role in, in the network. Uh, the Zverian brothers who founded us, and of course, 
we're going to stay with them. Uh, you know, we wouldn't be who we are without them. And, uh, and as we go forward, uh, we'll remain in close contact with them. In fact, uh, the, uh, the executive director of the XBSS is the one facilitating our strategic planning process. And the faith formation director of the XBSS works with our campus ministry on a regular basis. It's very important to me as headmaster that we remain aligned to our founding principles, and that is with the Zavarian brothers. So yes, uh, we, will, we will continue to stay with that. Uh, someone asked Rose, what are your priorities over the next three months, next 90 days? But what are some of your priorities? So some of my priorities, um, uh, first, I am trying to, uh, honestly, it sounds funny to say, but I'm just trying to figure out what makes Malden Catholic tick right now. I'm, I, I first want to be very clear as I work with Mr. Smith and Mr. Bocchino in terms of um, our roles and make that very clear in terms of um, what I'll be doing versus what they will be doing. And we really have to do that because we can't make that confusing for teachers and, we, and staff and, and students. So my first goal is to make it very clear um, what our responsibilities are. And, um, and then after that, preparing for what uh, the advisories that we talked about, making sure that our incoming are ready and feeling welcomed to the MC family. And then what does the beginning of the school year look like? How do we um, still in this you know, mode of COVID-19, how are we going to start school? So um, I have a lot to do and um, I need to make that, this is the week I'm making that official transition um, out of my old school into my new school here. And so, um, like I said, organizationally, um, that's my first goal. Um, I want to be able to work with the teachers, making sure that they're comfortable, what are their needs, what are they ready for, um, and then preparing for the opening of school year. Good. Well, great. Uh, someone's asked, and again, this will go in the question and answer, you know, what, what were some of the difference? What are some of the areas where we see gaps between the boys and the girls divisions? And I, I, I can just address that with a few. Yes. Um, now, one that I think of right away is our advanced placement program, uh, where students on the boys and girls division can take those at what grade levels and what preparation they have for those classes are different. They're not mm -hmm. always aligned the same. Uh, we did bring someone from the college board, that's the organization that administers the advanced placement program onto our educational committee mm -hmm. who's advising us. But we wanna make sure in the advanced placement program that those courses are set in the curriculum where our students have the greatest ability to be successful. Colleges like to see, rather than, you know, eight AP courses with medium grades, they look to see success at, at a higher achievement level in a few. And, you know, that's all dependent on the individual student. And I'm not saying students, um, we're going to put a limit on advanced placement, although our counseling and our student counseling would probably have some recommendations on that, but that's one. Another one is service hours. Our service hours, how students earn those, are different in the boys' division than the girls' division. I'm not saying one's better than the other, but they're different. And, you know, the things I'm mentioning now, I observed, but also parents would have a boy and a girl at the school at the same time. That's where these observations came from as well. They said, hey, listen, this is what's happening here and here. And it's it just, you know, it creates a, uh, a gap between the experience and what people, uh, what students are having. Another one is faculty spread. You know, we have outstanding faculty uh, in our current model. They were not all available for all uh, students to be able to have access to. And so we, we created, and it, it was unintentional, but as a result of the structure, pockets of teachers in different realms that made it so not all students had access to some of the outstanding teachers that we have with years of experience, and we want that as well. Uh, so those are just uh, several of the differences, uh, several of the gaps as we're trying to, to come to uh, one school 
more unity model uh, that is just so important to us. And uh, you know, those are just a few examples. Uh, I have others as well that we can send out as follow up to this. Um, uh, Rose, we're just about ready to close out the hour. And as the sun's getting lower here, I didn't expect I it to play <laughs> such a role here uh, uh, in, my, in my office. Uh, I just wanted to offer you any other closing comments or, or things that you want to add before we close. And after you make a few comments, I'll talk about next steps for people to meet you. Okay. So again, I, I just want to say, especially thank you for this opportunity. Um, I'm excited. I am honored. Uh, I'm thrilled to be part of this very um, storied tradition. Um, Malden Catholic has a great reputation, and I promise to do everything I can to continue to move that reputation forward. Um, it's important to me that I am a representative of all of the people who have gone before and graduated from the school and from the people who have led this school in the past. I've known Brother um, Puccio Rivet many times, and um, I look forward to his guidance as we move forward, especially now that I just heard someone say I'm the first female to be leading the boys. So um, I'm be looking to him for advice on that. Um, but I'm excited, and um, you know, it says a lot. You have so many alum that work at the school, parents of students um, working at the school, it's a family, and I am looking forward to being part of that family. I'm leaving one, but I already feel extremely welcomed and extremely happy to be part of this. So um, again, one of the things people say about me, my door is always open, and I think that'll show you by, I'm losing my voice, sorry. Uh, John will tell you how open it is because I, I want to make myself available this summer to you, and um, he's going to let you know that. So thank you, thank you. I'm, I'm very appreciative of this opportunity. Yep, thank you, Rose. And I appreciate you taking the time for this initial introduction, uh, just so people can put a name with a face and hear a little bit about your background and some of your thoughts as you're coming into the role. I'm noticing on some of the questions that are going by, uh, you know, there's some questions that are saying, are you taking things away from the girls program or uh, you know, are you saying the boys program wasn't as strong as the girls? And that's the danger anytime I talk about boys division, girls division. And again, it's a, just another example of, you know, when we think about these, how just so quickly there seems to be a sense of lack of equity. I just want to go on record. No, I, I'm not saying that the girls program will be anything but as strong or stronger than it is now. And, and the boys program is excellent as well. But as we know in education, as you learn and you grow, you make changes to enhance that. And when you have two excellent programs that need to be better unified, that just is a win-win for everyone involved, boys and girls. And so I just want to make, and I feel, you know, some of the comments coming through, people walk away and said, well, he meant this about the boys or he meant this about the girls. No, we're going to move forward. You know, I, I promise it is my commitment and vision that this co-divisional model for boys and girls is cool. going to become better for mm -hmm. both. Uh, right. And that's why we're moving to this. Okay. Right. Off the soapbox. Uh, Rose <laughs> is going to put out a schedule uh, in July, uh, starting the, the, the second or third week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. She's going to be at MC. We're going to uh, put out a schedule for socially distanced, appropriate meetings face-to-face mm -hmm. -face for any family that wants to come in and meet with her. And uh, so look for that. That will be coming out. There will be a sign-up genius, so you can uh, you know, reserve your slot in July. If the July slots all fill, then we'll move to more slots to August because one of Rose's priorities is she wants to meet with as many people face-to-face before the school year starts. And I'm excited about that. Once again, this shows Rose's priority to build those relationships and those priorities for our families. And so thank you again, Rose. I'm gonna close here before the sun takes over and I, I can't see uh, what I'm doing anymore. But thank you, Malden Catholic families. We will put out information we did already about an upcoming webinar about our, our fall re-entry plan. 
and we'll send out a reminder where we'll address what is it going to look like in the fall uh, with the COVID-19 pandemic right now, if we were mm -hmm. to start school and what are we considering? And then, you know, when are there gonna be updates along the way? Appreciate mm -hmm. all our families, appreciate all your prayers and everything you do for us. Thank you again. Have a wonderful summer evening. I hope you get outside. It's, it's beautiful weather tonight. And uh, thanks again for everything you do for us. Uh, God bless and talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you all.